Hi, I'm John Baxter, one of Baxter IP's commercialisation advisors, and over the next few minutes I'm going to share with you some of my insights into commercialising patents by licensing. It's best to think of the structure of the basic rights being granted by the licensor to the licensee as a matrix of parameters. These should include, firstly, whether the licence is exclusive, non-exclusive or a sole licence. The important question here is whether there will need to be other licensees now or in the future. A sole licence is generally accepted to be an exclusive licence, except that the licensor retains commercial rights to exploit the technology in its own right. Secondly, will the rights being granted be for manufacturing, usage or sales, or a combination of these three? How will a licensee be limited in terms of how it makes use of the IP? Remember that in the broader sense, the monopoly provided by a patent is to manufacture, use and sell. The next important issue is a geographical territory or territories. In which countries will a licensee be allowed to commercialise the IP? Next, the application field or a definition of the licensed product or licensed process is needed. Will a licensee be limited in terms of the types of products or processes which is able to use the IP in relation to? Generally the answer is yes, because patent claims, by their very nature, are written in order to maximise broadness in the context of the existing prior art. Next you need to define the actual IP being licensed. For example, granted patents, patent applications, registered designs, common law trademarks, documented know-how and undocumented know-how. Remember that any know-how to be licensed should ideally be fully documented and listed in summary bullet point form at the very least if this is not possible. And finally, are sub-licensing rights or have made rights going to be granted? The question here is whether the licensee will have the right to license others. If so, under what terms? Will the licensee have the right to subcontract the manufacturer of the licensed product? You can see here it's very important to think of the rights granted in terms of a matrix of these parameters which I've just mentioned. For example, exclusive manufacturing rights may be granted under a certain set of IP in the United States. But for this same set of IP, non-exclusive sales rights could be granted for the rest of the world. IP relating to hydraulic system may be licensed in one territory for earth moving equipment greater than 10 tonnes. And that same IP licensed for another application, for example materials handling or forklift trucks, less than 5 tonnes in another territory. You can be specific as you need to be here, providing the definitions are completely rigorous. Such limiting definitions, of course, are of particular importance where exclusive rights are being granted.